bring honor to House Dimitrask. <laughs> Yes, hello there. I'm Maggie Robertson and I play Lady Dimitrescu in Resident Evil Village. Lady D, or as I like to call her, Alcee, has caused, shall we say, quite the stir in the meme community in the interwebs. Uh, you know, there's an infinite number of tall jokes and people being thrown into horny jail. So yes, I'd say the Lady Dimitrescu memes revolve around, well, she's one of the boss villains from Resident Evil and she gained popularity online over the past couple of months, no, year. So I'd say that they are mostly preoccupied by her <clears throat> height. And yes, yes, it is the subject of much admiration and consternation and thirst, question mark, LOL. <laughs> So, you know, I think people are trying to process what to do with a character who is nine foot six. Well, I studied theater in college and then was working professionally in regional theater for many years. And then I went off and got my graduate degree in classical acting, aka lots of Shakespeare, from the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, aka Lambda. But that's a mouthful, so we'll just say Lambda. And yeah, I was living in London and then kind of went straight from that to L.A., moved to L.A. in 2019 and then booked the role of a lifetime not too long after that. So a wild ride. <laughs> yes, this is a crazy story as well and very much feels like one of those moments where, you know, that phrase people say, luck happens when preparedness meets opportunity, it really was luck that I found this audition. I had just moved to LA. I was an unrepresented actor and I was submitting myself for auditions on these various casting breakdown services and happened to see this voiceover audition that I fit the specs for. Voiceover had not been a thing that had that was on my radar prior to this, but I was like, okay, well, I might as well give it a shot. So I applied on a whim, essentially, and then um, a couple of weeks after I applied, I found out that I got an audition. So then I went in for the audition, which felt very similar to a theater audition. So immediately I was like, oh, okay, this feels really good and natural. And I felt like, oh, I got this. And I was just able to have fun and play around and move about the space and um, make it my own, which felt really good. So, but then, you know, you leave and you're like, oh, nice, that was fun. And then you kind of set it and forget it and you move on with your life. And a month after that, maybe I get the call that I have a callback. And I'm like, whoa, okay, that's really awesome and unexpected, but awesome. And then I go in and same deal. It's just fun. It felt very much like theater. They had me do some improv based stuff, just interacting with the space, interacting with different objects, exploring character movement. And so then I left again feeling like, well, that was a blast. Then you set it and forget it. You move on with your life. And then months after that, almost to the point where I had forgotten that I even auditioned in the first place, I then get the call that I booked the job, which was really exciting and felt really good, but I had no idea what that job was. <laughs> I was just like, oh great, I booked something. And, um, well, a lot of the information that I had for the audition and the callback were fake information. I think they keep a lot of it purposefully, um, so nothing gets leaked. So it wasn't really until I booked the job that I found out actual facts about the actual character <laughs> um but yeah the table read was a pretty momentous moment for me because i it wasn't until that moment that i started to figure out that this might be a big deal i walk into the room and there's just this palpable excitement in the air and people are like whispering to each other excitedly in corners and i'm looking around and thinking huh that's weird I think this might be a big deal. I think I might've booked something really big. And then of course I hadn't received my paperwork. I hadn't received the script prior to that table read. So then I went home afterwards and kind of furiously researched everything I could based on content clues to figure out what freaking game I was in and figured out that it was Resident Evil and had one of those like, oh, sit back in your chair and process and breathe for a minute moments because it's such a huge franchise. I'm not even a gamer. I have heard of Resident Evil. And I just finished a playthrough. I actually streamed on Nicole Tompkins' stream, who plays Daniel on 
for my daughter. So she had me on and she was playing, but I just got to like watch and explore the castle and I loved it. They really, I mean, Capcom, I feel like has really outdone themselves. The castle is so ornate and so deep. You can really feel the labor of love that went into making it because everything is thought out. Or like I just discovered that Lady D has an opera room in her castle. I think is so fabulous and such clear, it's so clearly in line with her character. I was like, oh, of course she does. <laughs> yes, her massive popularity. Um, yes, I think it was certainly very strange to be witnessing all of this still under NDA and not able to say anything. And so I was definitely kind of a lurker in the dark corners of the interwebs where I was just trying to absorb everything that I could, but never able to say anything. Um, I think Nicole Tompkins actually was the first person that alerted me to her big blow up. Uh, she sent me a text that was like, oh, by the way, you're blowing up. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know? And I was like, no. And then we just started sending each other fan art and memes back and forth. and. Um, so I think that's how I first came to know. I don't know. The memes are very funny. All the tall jokes are real to me. Like that's my real life. It's not a fictional character. Uh, so I can relate. Um, it is, it's, it's very funny. I think it took people by surprise and then keep all of the tall girl memes and, and whatnot. That's so, so true. It really does blow my mind, especially like the fan art, the cosplays, the memes. There's so much creativity out there in the in the internet and in the fan base. It's really quite inspiring actually to see. You're also like, how much time do you guys have? Like, my goodness, you must have so much time on your hands, but it's really, really quite cool. And it makes me laugh. So I'm happy that it's there. I enjoy it. And I think it would feel different if it was actually me, but the fact fictional character means that I get to have a certain degree of separation and I certainly feel that you know as an actor once you put the role out there into the world it's kind of it becomes separate from you at that point it becomes everyone else now gets to take it and run with it and it she can be whatever anyone wants her to be she can mean different things to different people she's not just one thing she's she's not just mine she's everyone and she never was mine because performance capture is such a Frankenstein process and there I am just one piece of a very big puzzle. So I don't think so. I think they had already designed her before I came on board. Her face, she has a face model. So that's who they designed her off of. And um, so that's who she looks like. She doesn't look like me, but physically moves and speaks and sounds like me. <laughs> Depends on the age group of my friends. There's a very different answer across the spectrum there. Um, I think my friends that are around my age and i do have a lot of gamer friends and then once once uh my name was released out there i got a lot of texts from people being like what this is insane and a lot of texts from friends being like oh gosh darn it i've been simping over lady d for months now and now it's you and now it's awkward i can't do that anymore and i was like sorry Ugh. um and then i you know of course i get a lot of the texts from my gamer friends that are like, sorry, I just killed you. Um, so that's always fun. And certainly my older relatives or friends needed some help to clue in that it was a big deal. But once I like sat them down and was like, no, 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 you need to just go onto the internet and do some research for like 30 minutes and then you'll understand what I'm telling um, Once they did that, they were appropriately wowed and um, impressed. So yeah, I really enjoyed, I saw a poster that someone had made of Godzilla versus Lady D and, Man, I would watch that movie. I think that looks like a great movie. My money's on Lady D, that's just me, but you know. Like my online presence is now through the roof. I had six Twitter followers before the game was released and now I have something like 23,000. <laughs> uh, opening weekend, I think I got like 6,000 overnight or something crazy, I went from six to 6,000. You know, I'm not this anonymous, invisible person anymore. I'm, I'm very much visible and what I say and do matters. People care about what I say and do, which is mind blowing to me because <laughs> I'm not really paying that much attention to it. Like I know that it exists kind of over there a little bit because overwhelmingly the responses that I personally and personally I'm getting have been really, really positive and about my work as an actor and the character, which is really what it's all about. And the thing that I want to talk about anyway, uh, in terms of the thirst, it's like, 
I don't know. I mean, I get it. She's a very sexy, confident, powerful, badass woman, of course. So it, it, I'm like, yeah, of course. Of course people think she's sexy. Duh, she is. They think she's sexy because she is sexy. Oh, it's been wild. I think it is so crazy the way that she has permeated pop culture. You see her everywhere. I think opening weekend, my friend sent me a picture. This is not a meme, but it's a thing. My friend sent me a picture of her weather app and her weather app had something along the lines of if being chased by a tall, hot vampire lady is wrong, then I don't want to be right on her weather app. What? Or like Domino's Malaysia did some marketing material with her holding a pizza. What? Um, that McDonald's sign that went viral where they were like, sorry for the delay. Our staff has called out sick. Go chase a tall, hot vampire lady around a gas. I think that's it. I'm so happy to be on with you today. It was super fun. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm I'm a nerd. I'm a, I'm a weirdo. So it's very surreal to be wanted on these <laughs> on these calls and so thank you so much bring honor to house dimitrescu <laughs>